Kia ora guys, I hope you're having an amazing day. Last week was my birthday and I had a little bit of a party, during which somehow, I know, raging party, the topic of cruelty free makeup was brought up. And it was amazing how many people actually want to get into wearing it and using it or making sure everything they use is cruelty free but they really don't know how to go about finding out which ones are, which ones aren't. Because countries like New Zealand and the UK have now made animal testing illegal, a lot of people think that most of the products they purchase are cruelty free or have kind of like pushed to the side that, you know, cruelty free is thing. So what I thought I'd do initially is kind of give you an idea. So what is cruelty free makeup? Cruelty free is a title given to products or activity that do not harm or kill animals. In cosmetics and beauty, it's often mean that the finished product is not tested on animals. Doesn't mean that every ingredient in it hasn't been tested on animals at some point in time. It may mean that they're not testing the ingredients currently because a lot of the ingredients have already been tested on animals, you know, way back when the laws were really, really bad. It means that they're not, you know, painting the face of a rabbit with makeup really stupid way of putting it. It also doesn't mean that the products are vegan. So a lot of cruelty free makeup are becoming vegan and making sure that there are no animal based products in it. But a lot of them still do have animal derived products such as honey and and fish oils and things like that. So it does depend where you want to go on the scale. I'm still pretty new to makeup and I'm still pretty new to the concept of cruelty free as well I must admit. So I didn't start wearing makeup until I was about 22. Before that, if I went out or anything like that, my friend, a really good friend back at uni would doll me up. But I just had no interest in it. Recently though, I have obviously got quite a big interest in it. And it wasn't until I really started looking at the products and, and looking online that I realized how many of the main big brands do still test on animals. So I thought I'd just give you a little insight into how I go about making sure the products that I am buying are cruelty free these days. The easiest thing you can do is to look on the back of a product and see if there is the Leaping Bunny logo which is here. So this looks like this in the UK and Europe and looks like this in Australasia. Just because a product doesn't have the Leaping Bunny logo on it, have it doesn't mean it's not cruelty free. Generally, if you are buying a product with Leaping Bunny, you should be fine. So if I find a product and it doesn't have the Leaping Bunny logo on it, but I still am kind of interested in buying it, what I'll do is I'll hit up my phone, I'll go, Google is sleek makeup cruelty free. And then I will read through all the resources that they give me or Google brings up. I won't really trust trust the makeup brand site itself because often they will word things to make it sound like it's all good but I will look through beauty bloggers there's one really good one like cruelty free kitty which has emails between them and the company and she kind of works out how they're responding and what the response means like that blog has an amazing I'll link it down below it has an amazing list of like which ones are and aren't and there's also, there is another catch to this, some of the cruelty free brands such as like Urban Decay and The Body Shop are actually owned by a bigger company such as L'Oreal that do do animal testing. It's a personal thing whether or not you want to just go 100% I will not support anything to do with those giant brands or you want to kind of be like I you know accept that this is owned by a bigger brand but this aspect of the brand itself is cruelty free and I want to promote this aspect of the brand to try and push the brand into doing more, you know, more cruelty free kind of stuff. Completely up to you. I mean, in an ideal world, there wouldn't be, you know, we wouldn't be testing makeup on any animal, but that's not the reality. So it's completely up to you. I wouldn't tell you what to do with regards to that. But yes, that's also something to look into. Cruelty free kitty is really good for like linking up the brands and things like that. Now. The same sort of thing goes for makeup as it does, you know, makeup as it does for like hair products and things like that. I have really red hair and I'm really lucky that the most amazing shampoo I use is cruelty free. However, a lot of shampoos and that that you buy at the supermarket, Neiman salons are still tested on animals. So if you do want to again go cruelty free, look for that Leaping Bunny logo or look up the brand itself. Now the other tricky thing when looking up the brand is they will often, a, a thing that, that kind of sparks alarm bells 
which is what I've kind of found out, is if it says product not tested on animals unless required to by law. Now, as I said, it's illegal to test products on animals in certain countries, so thereby there should be no legal reason to do that. So therefore, they may be selling in countries that do require animal testing by law, such as what I've heard is mainland China require animal testing by law. So if the products are sold in mainland China and have that little clause at least required to by law, I tend to stay away from brands that do that because I'm not really comfortable with that. But again, personal preference, if you're happy with that, just the one clause saying not tested on animals unless required to by law, personal preference, but I would not and I don't think that brand is classified as cruelty free. Now the, oh, the other little thing that I thought I'd mention as well is if you are deciding to go cruelty free, what do you do with all the makeup you have at the moment? Again, a personal thing, you could either donate, if it's not really used, donate it to like Women's Refuge or, or charities or give it to family members that are happy using it. The other option is to throw it out, but that, you know, is quite wasteful and it's kind of almost going against what you've said, which is, you want to help the environment and you want to help animals and you just throw away a whole lot of shit. So I personally am just using up what I have and when I run out of what I've got I will replace it with a cruelty free brand because I just think it's a bit more wasteful. But if you're not happy using that then I would just recommend passing it on to someone. If it's nearly empty I mean throw it out and, and buy a new lot. But that's something else to think about. So yeah if you have any more questions, as I say I'm not amazing at this kind of thing it's just something that I've recently gotten into but I'll link a few of the really helpful sites down below and yeah I hope you enjoyed that little brief rundown I know it's a bit of a controversial topic but it is I think it is good to kind of promote animal welfare and things like that and I mean I don't think it's necessary these days to actually test products on animals because a lot of what is in them has already previously been tested on animals and been used for years and we kind of know how it's gonna go that's my opinion, everyone has their own one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, have a lovely day, give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it to let me know, and click down below to subscribe if you do like my rambling voice, and I will catch you next time. Love you lots guys, Mwah. bye!